Good evening, everyone. We're going to wait just a couple of minutes uh, for more people to join us. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our live Q&A with Skidmore students on why do one in five Skidmore students carry two majors? I'm Michael Arnish, a professor of classics and an associate dean of the faculty. I'll moderate tonight's event. At Skidmore College, the liberal arts education we offer empowers our students to become informed, productive citizens. Regardless of whatever areas of study they choose to pursue, they learn to listen to one another, examine and assess evidence, and fashion arguments that are logically sound. Citizenry expects all of us to base our positions on evidence, and the broader and deeper, deeper a fact-based education, the better prepared our students are to contribute to society as informed citizens wherever they choose to live. Here at the college, we're very intentional about providing a framework for educating citizens. Our students begin their intellectual journey with a first-year seminar taught by their faculty advisor. As they make their way through the core curriculum, studying race, power, and justice, learning to apply quantitative reasoning to problem solving, acquiring global cultural perspectives, pursuing the study of a language, developing their skills as writers, and exploring artistic, scientific, and humanistic inquiry, our students choose one or more majors, which is tonight's topic. We offer over 40 majors, from anthropology to biology, from dance to neuroscience, from history to theater, and many more. And every student chooses at least one major. One of the hallmarks of the Skidmore education is that this kind of structured approach is flexible, and it provides our students both the latitude and a, um, a launching point for pursuing more than one major. It is a liberal and liberating kind of curriculum that creates the opportunity for intellectual freedom and the development of the life of the mind. This evening, each member of our panel of students has studied two different fields, two different disciplines. Our panelists are Tony, Katie, Kelby, Richie, Jasmine, and Brooke. I'm gonna to turn to each of the six of them to introduce themselves and say something about their choices at Skidmore, where they're from, and what they study. We'll start with Tony. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Tony. I'm originally from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm uh, going into my final semester at Skidmore, which is wild. Uh, what a strange time to be going into the final semester of senior year. Uh, I'm double majoring in geosciences and theater. And uh, I was so glad I was asked to be on this panel because uh, I'm a tour guide. And what I always end my tours with is like why I chose Skidmore. And the part of the largest reason as to why I chose Skidmore is because it's made so easy to double major both at like an institutional level and also at an interpersonal level. So like a lot of majors are fairly broad in the credits that you need to fulfill them. And then also like my advisor from both parts of my, uh, my studies are very supportive of me doing the other thing. Um, so yeah, uh, as far as outside of admissions and school, uh, I work for a dance research institute. I do voiceover and I make films. Uh, I was singing in an acapella group until we entered a global pandemic. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. So I'll pass it off to uh, uh, Katie, I guess. We'll pass it off to Katie. Thank you, Tony. Of course. Yeah. Hi everyone, so my name is Katie. I am a junior from Wisconsin. I'm double majoring in mathematics and biology. Um, sort of what I do outside of academics include um, being a head science guy along with Tony. Um, and I'm also the vice president of our Asian Cultural Awareness Club on campus. Um, sort of one quick reason that I chose Skidmore is I did the London freshman program and I really looked for a way in which I could study abroad quite early on in my career. Um, I knew that I wanted to pursue a science and a dance um, sort of structured education when I came into college. And so um, Scuba was really where I was able to do that. Um, although I'm not a dance major or minor, I'm still able to take classes every semester. Um, and just like Tony, I found that there's a ton of support for students um, pursuing multiple academic disciplines and their passions. Great, thank you, Katie. Kelby. Hi everyone, my name is Kelby Wittenberg. I am a sophomore at Skidmore. I am an anthropology and psychology double major with a minor in environmental studies. Um, on campus, I'm a varsity athlete. I'm on the men's crew team. 
I'm also one of the head guides for admissions. Um, oh yeah, I also failed to mention, yeah, I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. So me and Katie uh, represent the Midwest. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I do a lot of work for admissions um, and then varsity athletics keeps me busy. Um, and yeah, my double majors. Uh, and one of the reasons I chose to come to Skidmore is because I was able to both pursue a quality um, academic um, education, but also be well supported as a varsity athlete. So um, yeah. Great, thank you, Kelby. Richie. Hi, yeah, my name is Richie. I'm from Queens, New York. I always say it's the forgotten borough, but my Mets are coming a long way, so I'm happy about that. I'm a double major in economics and political science, and I'm a senior, so that's kind of crazy. It's my last semester, so it's a lot of emotions going wild, but the cool thing about sort of double majoring is I just really enjoy it, and I think I was able to sort of feel different um, fields, and also what I sort of do outside of just everything academic wise is I'm a teacher assistant under Marquetta Wolf, which is um, somebody from the economics department. I'm also part of the career development um, center team. So I do a lot of that behind the work stuff. So it's actually really fun. I also work in the equipment room. So everything that Kelby does, I sort of prep all the gear for that. So now Kelby <laughs> sees the face behind everything. So just a little fun fact about me. So, and one of the reasons why I chose Skidmore was fortunately for me, I was able to come here on a tour right before I even went through the college process and there's something where you get those butterflies in your stomach where you're like okay will any other college give me this sort of feeling and when I went on my college search I never felt anywhere was better than Skidmore so that's a little bit about me. I don't know when any of you sleep you just amaze me. Um, let's turn to Jasmine. Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine. Um, I'm from Manhattan, New York City, and uh, yeah, <laughs> um, and I am a sophomore. Um, so I'm a double major dance and health and human physiological sciences with a minor in education. Um, I am also a part of the Rhythmos Jazz and Hip Hop um, Dance Club on campus, as well as a member of the Dance Department um, Student Committee. I'm also a tour guide and the reason I chose Skidmore was because of what many of the others mentioned. Um, there's so much support for students who want to follow um, at two passions and have an interdisciplinary approach to their learning. Um, I, always, I came in knowing that, knowing that I wanted to um, continue with my dance, but also have um, academics to kind of back me up on that. And uh, Skidmore made it easy and was always welcoming. Um, and Another thing I would like to mention is that they do a great job on having um, great programs across the board um, and there's always help available if needed. Thank you, Jasmine. Before we turn to Brooke, just to let everybody who's, who's joined us um, know that if you have questions, please use the Q&A feature um, and we'll field your questions and our panelists would be happy to answer them. So Brooke, please introduce yourself. Hi everyone, um, my name is Brooke. I'm a junior, I'm from Vermont. I'm a sociology and environmental studies double major. Um, I work in admissions. I'm also a student supervisor in the dining hall. I'm a peer advisor for our pre-orientation program um, and I volunteer in the Skidmore Community Garden. Um, I Skidmore really stood out to me when I was looking at schools um, because of the really welcoming community as well as the wonderful athletic, uh, excuse me, academics. Um, and it was just a really friendly environment. I love the location. Saratoga Springs is a wonderful town. Um, and that's kind of what drew me here. Thank you, Brooke. So we're gonna to turn to questions. So our first one is gonna take you back to your first year or first couple of years at the college. Um, the student wants to know, what kinds of courses are included in the core curriculum? So if somebody wants to start with a first year seminar, be a good place to start. Richie. Yeah, it's sort of coincidental that Professor Arnish is here moderating the panel because my first year um, seminar was actually with him and he was my peer advisor for a good two years. So he set me on track for where I am now. So it's kind of a full circle where I'm a senior now and that was my first year, but that class really taught me a lot of things. Well, first it was 16 students. So we had a bunch of orientations where we just got together as um, just as um, classmates and peers, we got together, we did a bunch of fun activities. We also had a peer, and, um, I think a peer mentor um, who also was part of the class, Emily, who I'm still in contact with today. She's actually 
phenomenal and she also helped me a lot but sort of the way that this course sort of pre um, prepared me sort of for I guess everything at Skidmore is one this was a Greek mythology course which I didn't know coming in it was called democracy in action I was like maybe I should actually read the description next time but when I tell you that sort of course actually set me on mark to be a political science major because towards the end we started talking about how democracy was founded and how democracy is also sort of input into Saratoga so we had sort of this whole sort of curriculum based on Greek mythology, but then it also came back to current day politics, which I thought was something that actually prepared me for political science courses that I've taken up until now in my senior year. So absolutely, I think that course ultimately sets you up for sort of all other college courses. Richie, I gotta tell you, I think I can speak for every single family member. Um, teaching someone like you in the first semester of their college career and then hearing you at the end of your senior year here. It's incredibly gratifying. Uh, would someone else like to say something else about another part of the, of the curriculum before you got into the major? I can just roll through the, the requirements really quickly. Uh, sure. So there's basically like a math quantitative reasoning type requirement. There's like both applied and fundamental. Um, fundamental is like a sort of basic math class and applied is in, applying it in some capacity. There's a natural science uh, course that's required. There's something called the bridge experience. And this is a class that you take your sophomore or your junior year that's focused on US justice and power. Um, there's an art requirement. There's an expository writing requirement. Expository writing just means like writing at the college level type thing. There's a humanities requirement. There's a foreign language requirement. And then there's a global cultural perspectives requirement. Um, so those are sort of all the requirements. I think the I, I have found a very good balance with the requirements, particularly if you're double majoring in two different things, uh, because like I think like there were two, maybe two classes that I had to go out of my way to fulfill requirements because theater and geoscience covers most of the things at school um, uh, when it comes to requirements. So it's like not so much that you're not going to have the agency to sort of control what your own education is gonna look like, but it's enough so that it's going to put you outside of your comfort zone so that you might discover something you're interested in that you may not have thought you would be when you were coming into college. That's a great answer. Thank you, Tony. Let's shift to a different question. So um, Julian has asked about how difficult it is or is it difficult to balance having two different majors and to be an athlete and to be on a team. Kelly, you wanna feel that? Yeah, of course, I'd be happy to answer that question. So um, yeah, even as a tour guide, that's a question I get asked a lot, you know, how do you balance two majors and a minor and are a varsity athlete? So um, as, as an athlete, you know, we're expected to make practice every day and sometimes a practice in the morning as well. So it obviously is a big time commitment, um, but it's not like it kind of overwhelms my schedule to be an athlete. Um, those practices do happen kind of later in the evening. So I usually have to be out of class by kind of 4.30 or 4.45. And quite honestly, I found um, it very easy to kind of take the classes I want and also be able to make practice every day. It's not like I feel like um, committing to that um, athletic opportunity every day limits the um, choice of class, the choice of classes I can take because we have so many different classes offered at Skidmore. There are so many different ways to fulfill both of those um, majors I'm pursuing. So quite honestly, as an athlete, um, it doesn't, it, 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 you know, having to make those practices every day doesn't really limit the practice, the, the classes you can take during kind of the regular academic schedule. So I really don't find it um, difficult at all to balance my academic interests uh, with my athletic pursuit. Great, thank you, Kelly. So here's a question for Katie or for Jasmine or for Brooke, just because we haven't had a chance to hear from you yet. Each of the three of you has two very different majors. Um, for Katie, it's biology and mathematics with an interest in dance. For Jasmine, it's dance and human physiological science. For Brooke, it's sociology and environmental studies. So the question is, is it manageable to have two majors in two very different fields? What's it like to try to tackle two very different disciplines? Who wants to start? Go ahead, Katie. Yeah, absolutely. It's Personally, I haven't found that there's too much difficulty. Um, in terms of the majors that I'm in, there's sort of a built-in overlap in terms of like open-endedness within my majors. So 
a lot of times they'll ask for, you know, certain 300 level courses in a different department, actually, just to make sure that you're not taking classes in that department every single semester, that you're really getting a wide range and a broad interest of sorts while in college. And I think that's sort of typical amongst other Skidmore majors as well, requiring um, either through the all college requirement or through the major itself, you know, requiring that you're taking classes um, outside of your specific academic interests to ensure that um, you are having this really strong foundation. Um, personally, I found that like, you know, taking these classes for my double majors, I'm still able to take dance classes. I'm still able to take philosophy classes, which I'm also really interested in. And so there's a really wide range of flexibility for students in terms of um, what they're de doing every single semester. And I'm not just taking biology and I'm not just taking math classes. I'm taking a really wide range every semester um, because the college encourages it and because I personally really enjoy it as well. Thank you, Katie. Jasmine. Um, yeah, to add on to that, I think Tony touched on this in a previous question, but um, I haven't felt any conflict within my two majors whatsoever. If anything, it's helped me um, kind of reach my uh, requirements because they're so broad. Um, most of the classes that I take fulfill them um, anyways. So uh, I found it really nice to have a broad um, range of classes, especially since like, especially since um, I'm still a sophomore, I'm still able to finish all of my all college requirements um, using my double majors, but then also stepping outside of those and experiencing um, other classes where I may or may not have other interests in. Thank you, Jasmine. Brooke? Yeah, I also like to add to that too, um, with my majors, sociology and environmental studies, um, sociology really pushes you kind of to go beyond um, just the courses that that department offers and so does environmental studies as well. Um, I've actually found um, while working with various professors um, that there's environmental sociology courses and also I've had the opportunity to do an independent study as well that kind of links the two. Um, so while they are two different majors, um, just kind of being able to explore um, not only with sort of some of those requirements, um, but also kind of expanding beyond that. It's been really, really great and very beneficial. Thank you, Brooke. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to answer this next question. The question is about um, double majoring in computer science and business and also working at the college. And I'll just speak sort of in generic terms. So the vast majority of majors ask students to take something like nine, 10 classes or so. Does that sound about right to all of you? I know that in some majors, it's a bit more. Um, some majors, some fields have um, accreditation by agencies outside the college where they expect a lot more. So I know that's true, for example, in social work, um, in the pre-professional programs like theater, it's a lot more. But the vast majority expect about nine or 10 classes. A student at Skidmore is gonna take about 32 classes over the course of her career. Uh, she'll take maybe eight courses that satisfy the all college requirements, about 10 in one major, that leaves her 10 or 12 to do a second major or a minor or just explore courses in other areas. And as we heard from all of our panelists, they are very busy outside the classroom as well as inside the classroom. There's a question about physics um, and what the physics major is like. And I know that none of you is a physics major, but I suspect a number of you work um, or have worked in labs with faculty. Has anyone had a chance to work in a laboratory? Katie? Would you like to address that? I assume that's in biology. Yeah, I worked in actually both biology and mathematics research labs. Um, and so I can speak a little bit to the overlap between those two departments as well. Um, I actually pursued a project with a biology and a mathematics professor in which we uh, collected data with the biology professor and then analyzed it using mathematical methods and software in the math department. And so it was a really great opportunity to sort of see the overlap between the two departments. Um, and we actually were able to present our research um, at an international conference later on in the future. And so um, there's definitely a ton of opportunities for students to get involved with research. You can start as early as your second semester freshman year um, and professors are really eager and excited to work with freshmen. Um, and so I think there's a ton of support for students getting into research. We also offer a summer program, which I actually did my freshman year, um, where you can stay for five to 10 weeks on campus. It's fully funded, free room and board, um, and you receive a stipend. And it's a really great way to get your hands on um, sort of intensive research uh, work with professors gaining the understanding and expertise. And there's a really fun sort of presentation at the end where you can just practice for a presentation season and conference season coming up in the fall. And personally, I really loved it. It was a really amazing time. 
Who else wants to address that? Tony. I can just give some baseline information about physics if that would be helpful. And like sure. the department. Yeah. Uh, so basically like the physics department at Skidmore covers anything from like the very microscopic of quantum mechanics to the very macroscopic of like general relativity and things like that. Um, as far as resources that are, are allocated to physics students, there's the machine shop, which has like sort of like saws and things and soldering equipment that you can build things. We also have a makerspace called the hub that has soldering equipment, uh, a 3D printer, um, uh, like sewing machines. It's just like a maker space, essentially. And one of my friends made an electric violin uh, for a class, which is pretty dope. Um, if you're interested in engineering, we have a 3-2 program with Dartmouth, Clarkson, and RPI. And those are basically, you spend three years at Skidmore, two years at the other place. You graduate with a BA from Skidmore and a BE, Bachelor of Engineering, from whichever one of those uh, colleges you go to. And also one thing with, uh, this, this applies to both the physics and the geosciences department, um, as opposed to having like, lecture and lab be separated the lecture and lab is done together and so as opposed to having like three short class blocks and one long lab block uh which happens in like biology and chemistry typically um uh in physics it's the it's you basically have three sort of longer blocks where it's sort of like lab lecture combined so that's a little bit about that department thank you we probably should make sure that we mention something about the center for integrated sciences so in the last couple of years the college has endeavored to give our students and our faculty a new research facility. So the first half of the Center for Integrated Sciences opened last year, and the second half of it is under construction now. If you've not been on campus lately, um, all the beams are in place, all the steel is in place, they started to pour the floors, and by 2022, the East Wing will be done. Um, it's an exciting new part of the college. Have any of you had a chance to be in there and to work in there and to study in there? Please. Yeah, so I'm going to be taking a class in there next semester, but I've also sort of just been in there because it's an interesting space to see. It's really fun. And some of my professors actually had some open office hours in that space. Um, generally, I found that like the way that they've structured it is really incredible in terms of sort of the openness within the space. Um, I think a huge priority was placed on seeing what's going on inside of classrooms, inside of lab space, and so that um, students can sort of, you know, walk around the building, see something interesting, knock on the door, and then ask, you know, what's going on. I know personally that I've seen some really cool lab work going on, and so I've just sort of stood outside the window creepily looking at them, and then someone comes out and is like, can I help you? And I'm like, I'm just interested in seeing what you're doing because it looks so cool. And so I think this sort of transition from our older building, uh, which didn't have such great access into the spaces, into the new Center for Integrated Sciences, um, will definitely allow for more students to just sort of, um, you know, walk in, see what's going on, and find something interesting that they might be passionate about. Great. Thanks, Katie. Let's circle back to the idea of being a double major. I'm going to ask each of the six of you, which is the major you declared first, and when did you do so? Um, just as a, a point of clarification, a student does not need to declare a major until the spring of her sophomore year. Uh, in fact, many faculty, and I'm one of them, and I'm sure, Richie, I said this to you many times in our school year seminar together, don't rush, explore before you choose your first major. So let's start with you, Richie. Which major was your first and when did you decide it? I think you hit it right on the nail where I took your advice and I waited literally until the deadline, the until like, I think the last, I think first semester of your sophomore year, you have to at least have it in thought. You at least have to have the paperwork done for it. So I was like, oh man, I'm like, oh, I know. I'm like, I know my majors, but it's like, oh, it's just getting that paper to pen. But um, during my first two years before I even got to sign those um, papers for the declaration, um, I just was taking a lot of courses. I think I took environmental studies courses. I just wanted to feel out sort of what Skidmore courses had before I even made my full decision on taking um, economics and political science. And the first major I declared was political science because I was like, okay, I know who, who my advisor could be, which absolutely loved him to death. He's also a dean at the college. So it's weird, like all my professors are becoming deans, but it's, <laughs> it's a really cool thing. And then I think two weeks later, I was like, okay, I'll also do economics since I'm thinking I'm only four requirements down from economics. I could still study abroad and I still had a lot of options, a lot of leeway to go through it. So I was able to actually double major as soon as the, um, the deadline was put in place, so. Thanks, Richie. How about you, Brooke? 
So I also waited um, a while to declare my major. Um, sociology was my first major that I declared. And I spent um, right up until the first semester of my sophomore year kind of figuring out what I wanted to do. Um, I came in pretty undecided to Skidmore. Um, so those kind of general requirements were a really great way for me to explore and kind of figure out what I really wanted to do. And so sociology was it. And then um, while kind of exploring, um, I had always known that I was interested in environmental studies. I didn't know to what degree. Um, and so I kind of kept taking a few classes on the side. Um, and this past semester, I ended up declaring um, environmental studies as well. Thank you, Brooke. How about you, Jasmine? Um, so I actually am about to, I plan to declare my majors um, once we get back to school uh, in the spring. Um, but how I decided is coming into Skidmore, I knew I had interests in um, the general areas. So I kind of just took classes um, that seemed interesting and um, tried to take classes that were outside of my comfort zone as well as within my comfort zone to kind of just have a broad, um, you know, bank of classes that I might be interested in. Um, so I plan to kind of just uh, clear them simultaneously. Um, but I, yeah, it definitely helped in that first um, year, especially being able to kind of dip my toes into a bunch of different departments um, to figure out if I wanted to add something, if I wanted to change it, whatever the case may be. Thanks, Jasmine. Elby? So much like Jasmine, I kind of came into Skidmore unknowing the general area, which I enjoyed working in, but not quite, you know, with a major in mind. Um, and actually through the um, FYE experience, uh, the Scrivener seminar, I ended up discovering anthropology, which is something I never really knew about in high school, and then absolutely fell in love with it after I took my first um, class with it. Um, and so I ended up continuing to pursue classes within that department and declaring my major in anthropology, but I always kind of knew I wanted to do something with biology or with chemistry, and so I kind of dabbled in those departments and um, they were fun, yes, but I was kind of looking for something with a little bit more of a humanistic aspect of science. And so I started working within psychology and that fit exactly what I wanted. Um, so I ended up declaring um, uh, my psychology double major. Um, and it also kind of speaks to the fact that you can, you know, you still have time to explore and kind of take a bunch of different classes and not have it hurt um, your ability to do a double major or your ability to, um, you know, completely switch up your major if, you know, you end up finding something that you like a lot more um, than or you originally thought when you entered Skidmore. So um, yeah, kind of uh, speaking about that just a little bit. Yeah, Kelby, I started out as a pre-med student. I'm a classics professor. <laughs> Tony? Uh, upon entering Skidmore, I knew I wanted to do something in the performing arts and something in the sciences. And uh, I, after my first semester, I did a production in the theater department and I knew I wanted to be a theater major off the bat. So that was the first one I uh, declared. I decided on it after my first semester and I probably declared after my third out of uh, laziness and procrastination. Um, but yeah, that's the first one that I had declared. And Katie, how about you? So I came into Skidmore thinking that I wanted to be a neuroscience major, obviously I'm not. And I like to say that I was talked into being a math major by my advisor because um, she had tapped me for a research project. I had fallen in love with the project and I saw that math was sort of beyond in a textbook and I really saw the applications and I loved it. Um, so I applied, I actually um, declared my math major right before the pandemic hit. And then only last semester I declared my biology major just because I really wasn't sure about who I wanted as my advisor for that. Thank you, Katie. So you all have two majors, you might have a minor as well. You're all busy outside of the classroom. What's the balance like of, of academic work and the rest of your life in college? How do you find time to do everything? And the answer is not that you don't ever sleep. Who wants to start? Kelby. Yes, yes, the answer is um, not ever sleeping. Uh, just kidding. No, it's not that. But I wanted to say, so I talked a little bit about um, athletics a little bit earlier in this panel. Um, and I kind of failed to mention, I also have, you know, other commitments outside of athletics. So like part of the Skidmore Democrats, um, I also work um, in an environmental conservation group. So 
I'm a varsity athlete and I work in admissions and have these other extracurriculars, but I'm still, I don't feel like I'm cramming my schedule because there's such, um, th there's so much ample time to explore all these different things because um, there's, it, it, like I kind of said earlier, um, the, my practice and my extracurriculars kind of come later in the day and there's this big chunk of time blocked out for um, uh, academic interests kind of in the middle of the day. So whatever you want, I'm both, the, I'm like able to go to practice and then go to a club meeting after practice and still have time for homework and eating and dinner and stuff. So I just really feel like it's about um, good time management. That's definitely something that I've um, really come uh, to learn and, and love and appreciate good time management at college. But uh, yeah, you're able to pursue a lot of different um, opportunities very comfortably because of how many support networks there are and how great, you know, professors and teachers and classmates are. So definitely not very hard to pursue a lot of different things at the college. Thank you, Toby. Jasmine, how about you? I see you shaking your head. No, and then Tony. Yeah, I was um, I was just thinking as Kelby was talking, I think it's also, um, I mean, obviously it's, it's time management, but to dive a little bit deeper in that, I, I'm someone who likes to keep busy. So actually having, um, being able to keep my schedule on a schedule is one of the things that helped me most because um, having, you, I'm still able to find time and pockets of time where I'm able to do my work and do my extracurriculars and um, still, you know, be social and have times with my friends and go to dinner, um, things like that. I think it's more just uh, like, it's, it's not, it's not that as difficult as it may seem on the outside. I think it's more just um, being able to work through your work and um, keeping a sound schedule, which works for you and everyone's is different. Um, and yeah. Thanks, Jasmine. Tony. I just, uh, I want to put, it, it can be pretty hard sometimes, like to be completely candid. Um, so like, for example, like if I, if I'm doing a theater production, I have rehearsal seven to 11, five days a week, and then tech week comes around, and then I have rehearsal six hours a day uh, for the whole week. And maybe I have to wake up at 8am on, on a weekend to do my job, or I film a dance video, or and so on and so forth. Um, but the thing is, like, being easy and being doable are two different things. So it's not easy, but it's definitely doable. And I think like a lot of that does come down to planning. And I many times have planned poorly and paid the consequences. Um, but one, I think one piece of advice that I would definitely suggest that has worked for me, um, and it's a little unfortunate because it's not really possible in the middle of a global pandemic, but have basically like specific spaces that are outlined for where you're going to do certain things. So, uh, and this is like a, a neuroscience backed point where you like, if you're learning a specific thing in an area, you associate that area with the knowledge and doing that act. So like if you're on your phone in bed all, the, all, all day, then you're probably gonna have trouble falling asleep. It's just a, that kind of thing. But yeah, I would definitely recommend like taking advantage of places like the library or like, uh, like, like different department lounges and things like that. That's been like unironically like a very helpful thing for managing my time. Thanks, Tony. How about you, Brooke? What's the balance like? Yeah, I would echo what everyone's really said so far. I think finding that balance, I'm involved in a bunch of different clubs as well on campus, work and other things. Um, and so it's kind of um, looking at your courses, looking at your week ahead and, you know, maybe thinking about some of those things, but knowing that actually, you know, taking time for yourself, setting those free, like making sure you have free time um, is really important as well. Um, just because you don't want to burn out. Um, you want to continue doing, you know, the things that you love. And I think that's why we're all kind of double majoring. We both, we love everything that we do. Um, and so, uh, yeah, really for me, I think echoing Tony's point, you know, finding those particular spaces. I work best in the library. Um, you know, I hang out, you know, in my room or other spaces on campus. Um, and that sort of thing has also really been helpful for me. Richie, how about you? Yeah, I think also just to echo and piggyback off of everyone where it's it's absolutely doable. And I'm like, people like to call me Mr. Skidmore because I hold a lot of jobs on campus, like career development ambassador. I'm also a tour guide, which I forgot to add. So I'm part of this whole entire group. I'm also working in the equipment room. I'm a teacher assistant, so I end up grading. So I do a lot of stuff also on part of the OP council. So there's a lot of things that I'm a part of and it might seem overwhelming at first. And it sounds like a lot, like when I say it, it sounds like a lot, but then when I look at my schedule, I'm like, okay, I have this panel at this certain time. So I need to, this amount, this ample amount of time to prepare for it. I have a senior thesis coming up. So I'm making sure that I'm working during winter break. So it's more of just 
being able to schedule things and being able to plan it. So you just have to have sort of, I feel like you just have to have that understanding of this is my workload. If Once you understand what your actual workload is, then you understand how much time to put towards um, specific classes, specific majors or specific activities. And for me, I personally find it absolutely easy. I always have time for my friends, except in the global pandemic. But typically when there's not a global pandemic, I always make time for friends and I always have that social life as well as my academic life. And I'm, I'm personally able to easily flip the switch where, okay, I need to just buckle down, get this work done, so then I can have more free time um, later on that week. Richie, what's your senior thesis on? Oh, right now I'm still struggling between two topics right now. So one, I'm thinking of the impact of sort of schools on GDPs, um, like specific GDP. So I'm thinking of taking different types of colleges. So for example, HBCUs, then private institutions. So different types of institutions and see how they affect the GDP and seeing if there's sort of this unequal balance of does this institution affect the GDP of this neighborhood too much? Is, should there be sort of reallocation of resources? Another one is sort of flipping that on its head where it's saying, okay, those colleges in certain counties increase the GDP. So if I have more college, if, if, for example, if I have more colleges in a certain county, maybe the GDP will be higher and sort of take it on that sort of statistical analysis. So still debating between the two, but I'm going through a bunch of literature. So don't worry, my professors have me on clock because as soon as I come back in January, that's the biggest focus for me. Richie, just because you were my um, advisee for a couple of years, I'm not checking up on you. I'll just curious. <laughs> Katie, how about you? What's the balance like? Yeah, um, I think I have to echo most of what Jasmine said. I hate to be like not have anything to do. I love to be busy. And honestly, my piece of advice that is probably the most unrealistic for some people, but is I never procrastinate. If I get a homework assignment, I will do it like literally within an hour of receiving it. Um, I come from too heavy homework, like giving majors math and bio. Oftentimes I'm getting a ton of homework assignments every single week. And so I've just developed this mindset of like, if I get a homework assignment, I see it in my inbox or I see it online I have to do or else I just I don't know what else to do with myself and so it's not super applicable advice but it's worked for me and it's allowed me to do a bunch of different things like everyone has said um, I have my fingers in a lot of different um, places at Skidmore and so um, just never <laughs> procrastinating is how I get it done basically. So when you major and in your case is when you double major the vast majority of the work that you do is in the last two years right in your junior and senior years it's also a time especially in the junior year when a lot of students want to study abroad. Um, how do you fit it in? How do you leave the college, go either abroad or someplace else in the States and spend a semester, some students do a year, but spend a semester studying maybe your fields or something else and manage to fit all that in? Who wants to start? Richie. Yeah, since abroad is still so fresh in my head since I went, what was it? I think, what is it, spring semester when the COVID pandemic actually hit for the first time. So I had three full months in London, which is absolutely a blast. But before I, I, we even trickle back to that, I think I had an advising meeting with you and I was talking about going abroad. And then I remember you told me what my major was and you just went on your computer, started typing in my major and you're like, oh, these are all the programs that you're eligible for with these majors. And that sort of one opened my mind like, oh my God, I can do all these majors and still be on track to oh, graduate but with both of my majors perfectly intact and be able to study abroad and study the things I care about most. So fortunately, for, fortunately for me, I did three political science courses abroad in Westminster, which they all transferred over to Skidmore as 300 level courses. So I was able to knock a good portion of my political science course just going abroad that semester. And trust me, the time you'll have abroad is absolutely a blast. And the cool thing about going abroad is one, financial aid comes with you. So whatever financial aid or um, you have comes with you abroad. So you don't have to really pay that extra dime. So that's why I always recommend it. And also it's more of just understanding what your major allows you to do. I know for economics per se, I knew that I couldn't really take much economics courses abroad because they only allow one um, 300 level course to transfer back. So you have to sort of understand what major you're in in order to understand sort of how you would go abroad. But my recommendation is if you're thinking about going abroad, one, do it, and two, talk to your advisor as soon as possible just to understand, sort of have a, have a blueprint sort of set out. So that's my advice. 
I can say it's something like two thirds of our students spend either a semester mm -hmm. abroad or do a travel seminar. Um, was it you, Katie, who said that you started in London? Could you talk about the yeah. London program, please? Sure. So I had sort of an unusual abroad program compared to others. Um, I went abroad before I even declared my major, which I think is amazing because it gives you the perspective and it gives you the opportunity to take a bunch of different classes outside of um, the requirements that you would typically have for your major. Um, personally, I used my time in London to fulfill a lot of the all college requirements and get that expansive view. I took a theater class um, where I was seeing a play every week, which was amazing. Um, I took a globalization class where we really explored economics, political science, just global studies in England and in Europe in general. Um, and so it was a really fantastic experience. And I think it's an amazing program for students who are double majoring or planning on um, major minoring or just having a extreme or, you know, sort of advanced academic course load when they do come back, just because it gives you that flexibility. Um, in the first year, a lot of students are taking classes sort of that maybe don't even relate to their major in the future and later on. And so, um, you know, using the opportunity to take classes and to explore and to be abroad. Um, personally, I know that coming into Skidmore, I looked at in abroad programs and I couldn't find too many that offered both biology and mathematics courses or the courses that I were interested in taking. And so, um, you know, getting the abroad program out of the way in a place that I actually was really interested in studying was um, a huge advantage. I would highly recommend doing the program. It's about 30 or so freshmen. Um, you spend your time in London, you get to travel around Europe. Um, there's a one week fall break, which a lot of students uh, take advantage of and travel. And so I went to Ireland for a weekend Then I met up with my mom. She'd never been to Europe before. It was also her birthday weekend. It was an amazing experience. Like I said, I do it again in a heartbeat and it was a fantastic way to get my abroad experience sort of out of the way before I really dove into my academics. I taught in the London program some time ago. It was one of the best experiences I've ever had at the college. It really was phenomenal. Um, let's talk about the 800 pound gorilla that's in the room, COVID. You've all now been Skidmore students having dealt with it um, as of about mid-March in the spring semester and now through this fall. What's it been like? What impact has it had on your ability to do your major and to study other things as well? A lot of questions have been coming in asking about what's it like to do the two majors, but also do you have time to take other courses? So can you blend those two questions together? Coping with COVID, taking courses either on campus or remotely and trying to do things outside of the majors that you're pursuing. wants to get us started. Yes, Kelby. Um, so first of all, I would just like to talk about kind of the coping with COVID question. Um, and really what, what being sent home from college made me realize was how much I enjoyed being at college, right? As soon as I got that taken away from me, I realized, oh man, I wish I could be, you know, on campus right now in the spring um, because I enjoy my time at school so much. Um, and, you know, it was honestly, you know, it was hard um, and it was hard for a lot of us in many different ways, not seeing, you know, a lot of my friends, um, not having, um, you know, that, that, that deep interpersonal connection that kind of characterizes a liberal arts college. Um, um, and so, uh, it was, you know, it was a hard adjustment, but I think professors, you know, worked overtime and all of the professors I had last spring were so good about making that transition easy, both in terms of my workload, but also like me as a person. So my psychological health was something that came up a lot in terms of teachers saying, you know, if you need extra time for this assignment, take all the time that you want, turn it in when you can, because, you know, that your health takes priority over your coursework. So that was amazing um, that so many of my professors did that for me last spring. Um, and then kind of transitioning to how that affected um, working towards my double major. So obviously the last part of my spring was spent online. And while that was, like I said, a, a difficult transition, it was one that I was able to um, kind of come to terms with and, and work within after I'd kind of learned about it. But um, I was very fortunate to be able to return to campus this past fall and um, continue basically uh, my normal academic experience, you know, with a little bit of modification, such as taking classes in the tents and, um, you know, a, a mixture of online and in-person lectures. So, um, you know, that was a little bit different too, but um, being able to come back to campus and have access to all the resources that, you know, make Skidmore such a great school um, was really amazing um, and definitely 
Um, you know, I, I now that after being sent home last spring makes me love all the time I get to spend on campus now because I enjoy all of it. So just a couple of weeks, Kelby, just a couple of weeks. <laughs> uh, who else? Katie and then Brooke. Yeah, so in terms of what I did with the last semester, I knew that biology, the labs were not going to be in person and a huge part of why I like being in biology is the labs. And so I made the decision um, with my academic advisor that I would only take mathematics based classes in the fall because those were all going to be taught relatively normally. And so um, this spring I'm loaded up on biology and the labs are mostly in person, which is really nice. And so I waited for that and it paid off. Um, in terms of taking classes outside of my academic interests as well, I try to take a dance class every semester. I'm pretty involved in that department as the liaison. And so um, while I didn't feel comfortable necessarily returning into studio spaces, I did take an online dance um, yoga course for students and it was a really fun course. Um, we actually had a pretty small group. And so we really got to connect with a lot of, with the professor um, who was teaching the course. Um, and it was a really great way for me to still get that dance experience from my the comfort and joys of my own apartment and it was a really great way to just you know connect with a smaller group in terms of um you know what we were learning what we were studying at that time thank you thank you katie brooke and then tony yeah um so i faced a lot of struggles when i originally went online because a lot of the courses that i was taking at the time um, were lab specific um, for environmental studies and they were very specific to the saratoga area um, but my professors were really creative in, you know, kind of working through different solutions as to how to make the class as close to um, what it was initially. Um, and then just sort of various modifications um, this past semester, but it was really successful overall. I would say one of the harder things for me uh, was not being able to go abroad. I was originally on a travel seminar um, last spring, and then I was supposed to go abroad um, next semester as well. Um, but I think in a way that's actually been um, a good thing too. It's the silver lining to it is um, it's really opened me up to be able to take a lot of classes that I wouldn't um, normally take um, this coming semester um, because I was planning to go abroad. So now I have a lot of free time and I was talking to my advisor and he was like, why don't you just take something that you've never taken before, um, get time to explore a little more. Um, so there's actually a lot of great benefits as well, um, kind of coming along with that. Thank you, Brooke. Tony. Can't hear you, Tony. On me completely. There you go. Oh, okay. Um, is my audio okay? Sorry. Yes, you're okay. 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 Um, I'm going to be completely honest with all of you because it wouldn't feel right if I wasn't. It's been super hard for me. It's been incredibly difficult. I think like the thing that I carry maybe the most passion for that I've ever had in my whole life is something that is completely unable to happen right now. Like theater, like theater as we know it, gone, gone during a pandemic. And like, especially like going into my senior year, like really looking forward to like, try to trying to like develop my craft and things like that. And then going into uh, a world where most of my time is spent in my room and I can't really leave too much. Um, it's, it's been super hard. And I also, I'm, I'm somebody who has a pretty tough time focusing, especially when I'm staring at a computer screen and getting lectured through a computer screen. It's been hard. And I do definitely want to echo what Kelby said is that when we got sent back in the spring, I was devastated. I, I got, I, I, it was like that whole period of time between being sent home in the spring and going back in the fall was just like a constant battle trying not to be depressed and step ending the whole day in my room. Um, it's, it's been really hard, but I do think I have such a deep end appreciation for the people that I've had around me at Skidmore and like the relationships that I've developed, like the amount of the, the amount of value I have for the for my friends and my professors and even coworkers and everything has developed so deeply that like I just want I just want like people around me to know that they're appreciated and they're and they're validated and things like that, and uh, it's it's hard it's hard doing online classes. I'm sure all of you know. I'm sure all of you have had a, an equally tough time, and I hope that this speaks to you in some in some capacity behind the computer screens that you're looking at right now. Um, but yeah, it it's hard, but we'll make it through it. You know, uh, I do feel like I still learned things, but it has been difficult, and that's just sort of the honest truth behind it. It's honest, Tony, and it's it's you know it's a it's valid for all of us um, in education and outside of education. Jasmine, 
Yeah, I just want to echo, I think um, Brooke mentioned this, but how it has been tough <laughs> for sure. And being uh, one of my majors being dance, you, I'm sure you can imagine um, it being very difficult being sent home and not having the studio space to um, move, especially since a lot of people um, didn't have the space to move. Um, but professors and faculty, they come up with really creative ways and they're extremely supportive, um, especially in this time. They are very, understand, uh, very understanding on, you know, this whole situations and they are uh, willing and able to help in any way possible. Um, and that, yeah, that goes for, I'm, I'm assuming that goes for all majors and all departments. Uh, it's been, although it's been very hard, um, obviously it, they've been doing a great job um, supporting their students and yeah. Thanks Jasmine. In fact, both you and Tony raised a topic that's been asked um, by someone and that is what's the support structure like, the resources like for all of you as you've gone through college, whether in your sophomore year or your senior year, have you found that there are resources here that help you get through your major, your other studies, your co-curricular life, your social life, the challenges that you face, the difficulties with COVID and so on. Um, how has the support at Skidmore worked? Brooke. I think Skidmore as a whole is a really supportive community. Um, when I was looking at the school, that's kind of what I noticed. And then since then, um, I would say academic wise, my advisor, um, has really been very helpful through this whole process. Um, you know, more than, you know, just someone who's your professor, but over time, you know, someone who's interested in your life, wants to know how you're doing. Um, and uh, I found, you know, even the summer um, when we're no longer having classes, my advisor still reaches out to me and asks how I'm doing um, or just checks in. And I think that's really nice. I think also um, my friends are very supportive and, and really just everyone that you kind of meet at Skidmore um, over the course of your four years. Um, and then also I work in a bunch of different departments on campus. Um, I'm always, you know, chatting with different um, individuals and kind of just having support um, from them as well. I work in the dining hall and um, everyone's always like, hey, you know, what's your major? What classes are you taking this semester? Um, and so those connections that I build um, kind of as I go have also uh, been really, really helpful. Thank you, Brooke. So yeah, please, Richie. Um, one of the things that I found the most helpful was PAC, which is peer academic coaching. So I remember at first, I think I was more hesitant on just go seeking that extra help just because in my high school, typically I wasn't seeking that extra help that I should have been seeking. But then I started getting more comfortable with sort of using the resources. And I started noticing that when I went to peer academic coaching, it's not just tutoring, it's a bunch of students just working together, trying to help each other find sort of this common answer. So I remember um, I was taking two of the theory courses for economics in my sophomore year. And I was like, oh, this is, this is gonna be a rough semester. I'm like two theory courses and everyone says those are the, some of the hardest econ courses, but you'll, you'll survive. I was like, okay. And after like the first few courses, I was um, first few classes went by and I was like, oh my God, this is, I'm like, I need to go seek out extra help. So I was like, hmm, I can obviously go to my advisor. I can obviously go to the professor, but I'm like, let me try PAC for the first time. And I remember, when I went in there for the first time, you see a group of students from the same class and I'm like, oh, you guys needed help too. And that sort of reassured me when it's like, I'm not the only one that sort of is seeking this extra help. And it just makes you feel sort of safe and in such a space. And it's one of those spaces where I like to work and just crank out a lot of econ work, a lot of political science work. And sometimes even if I'm not necessarily doing, um, I'm struggling on a problem, I just tend to go there just to see if I can lend help just because that's sort of the community that we have at Skidmore. Thank you. There's a very kind comment in the chat from Karina Gandhi. Thank you all for being so honest about everything. I really appreciate it. And I think everyone can relate. I've been doing online school all year and it could be hard to get motivated, as Tony was saying. Uh, it's hard for the faculty sometimes as well, as you can imagine. Uh, but we're all passionate about learning. And then um, Karina finishes with, at least for me, it's just high school. I feel bad for you guys since you missed out on a semester of college. Um, yeah, I hear that. I'd like to turn to high school for a second. It was one of the questions that came up a while ago. So um, imagine you get an email from your favorite high school teacher. 
and your teacher invites you to come back to your high school and talk to juniors and seniors, those who are about to go to college, those who are looking at colleges and thinking about applying to Skidmore and other places, what advice would you give them? Tony, why don't you start it off, please? Don't let the college process consume your life towards the end of your high school. It is years, of, like no year of your life will you ever get back. And that includes your time at high school. And so like, do your best to enjoy the present and the moment that you're in. Obviously don't slack off and stop caring about the things that you're doing. But like the amount of people at my high school that, con that whose lives were consumed by the thoughts of going to college and oh, is this college the perfect fit for me? There are so many incredible colleges in this country and abroad. You can go abroad to study at college too. That like worrying about like finding the one perfect school for you is going to drive you wild. At least that's, uh, this is all obviously opinion, but I would definitely say like that the biggest piece of advice I can give to anybody, particularly high school students, is to focus on like the, the moment that you're living in and try to enjoy the moment and develop the relationships that you have and care for the people around you, et cetera, in the time. And I feel like a lot of people in the college process let that consume their entire life. So that's my two cents. Thank you, Tony. But then of course, come to Skidmore. Richie. Yeah, one thing I wish that I did, but it still worked out for the best because I'm at the college that I wanted to be at, but it definitely reach out to the students, see if you can sort of find connections. Sort of, I found, I started realizing once I worked at the Creative Development Center that everything's sort of on connections, like who do you know, networks, or just even just reaching out. Because a lot of people do love to talk about themselves. So if you can get a student from that college per se, and maybe have a quick conversation with them about sort of actual tailored questions, that's some, one of the things that you can really do. And also attending panels like these, sometimes you actually see, like Tony has been very real. I think this whole entire panel has been very real with real emotions about how COVID has affected a lot of students. And I think that sort of coming to these, you can you kind of get the atmosphere of how Skidmore students are. We kind of, I think I know maybe one person on this call and then also Arnish, obviously, but it's sort of, I've, I kind of enjoy sort of everyone here on this call. I feel like everyone I can really just have a conversation with. I can probably pull anyone, one of these panelists out right now and be like, let's have a conversation. How has Skidmore, how has Skidmore been for you? And I think that sort of speaks volume of just how you can go about the college searching process that some people don't really utilize a lot. Thanks, Richie. Jasmine, how about you? Um, I think one of the main things I, was, I would say to high school students, especially um, juniors and seniors in high school would be don't rush. Um, I remember at that time I was always trying like, you know, I, I wanna I wanna get there. I wanna, you know, apply to the colleges, get to the, get my decision, you know, go in, start my life or whatever. Um, but I think what what I took away from that was one of the best, sorry, I'm I'm losing my train of thought at the moment, but uh, I think one what I took away from it was rushing there's no need to rush really because you have such, this, uh, this is such a time of development um, for anybody and being able to go through this process and wanna live in the moment. Um, and even though it might be difficult right now, especially because of COVID, um, you can still kind of seize it um, in a way and being able to, you know, experience classes and life and things that you would never really get to experience after college. Um, so yeah, just kind of don't rush the process, um, trust the process uh, and just kind of, you know, it, everything will work out, I, I promise. <laughs> Jasmine, I wanna stay with you for a second. A number yeah. of questions have asked about um, blending two very different kinds of disciplines. Um, you study both human physiological science and dance. And the questions have been in particular about what's it like to be in the arts on the one hand, mm -hmm. Tony in theater, you in dance, and then take and study a very different kind of discipline. Oh yeah, um, I I love the experience I've had so far. Um, art, like dance has been such a big passion of mine for many years and coming into Skidmore, that was one of my initial lures to Skidmore, I guess you could say, um, because of how strong the dance department um, is at Skidmore. Uh, but being able to do something so different was one of the most 
like one of my best decisions I think I've made so far because um, doing a science, it kind of takes me out of that world when I want to be out of that world, if that makes sense. Uh, so it kind of is an, another outlet that um, provides for me, but I'm still able to pursue, you know, passions and um, routes that I have interest in at the same time. Thanks, Jen. Brooke, what would you say to a group of high school students at your former high school? Yeah, I think um, echoing a lot of what everyone has really said, you know, don't rush, really take your time. Um, I think Richie was right, like make those connections with students if you have that opportunity, um, because um, I know from personal experience um, and then seeing, you know, what the application process looks like now and, um, you know, how you go about your college search has really changed. Um, but for me, it was really just being able to come to campus, um, seeing the community, interacting with individuals. So, um, you know, if you don't have that opportunity to do that in person, um, you know, virtually is a really great way to do that as well. Um, Richie also said, you know, going to things like this panel, and I think that's that's really true um, because that's how I found, um, you know, my love for Skidmore um, and sort of was encouraged to apply. So, um, yeah, really just all of that. Katie, I'm going to shift it just a little bit. Um, in that, it's now 731, so if any of the six of you need to leave, please, we all understand. Let's just go a, a couple minutes more. Um, Katie, if you could do it all over again, would you choose the same two majors? Would you follow the same path? Uh, would you do something differently at Skidmore? Yeah, I think if I could do it all over, what I would do is stick with my majors, but I would have gotten into them earlier. I think I had a real hesitancy and I talked about this with um, being talked into being a math major. I had a hesitancy about mathematics in general coming in from high school. I thought that it was something that was like purely taught in theory and only in a textbook and never really used outside and sort of a common misconception from a lot of high school students being taught uh, math and that um, you know, sort of age range. And so I think I would have you know, allowed myself more openness in terms of exploring how math can be applied and how the two disciplines can be interconnected. And so um, I think I'd definitely stick with my two majors, but I'd really get into them earlier in terms of the courses I was taking, the people I was talking to, the research I was doing, um, taking advantage of those sort of things. There are a lot of things in my freshman and sophomore years that I wish I had um, been a little bit more brave in terms of accepting and trying and um, really pursuing. Great, thanks, Katie. All right, last question, I'm gonna ask it of each of the six of you. I always hate asking this question of students, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. What happens after Skidmore? You've got two majors, you've got, I, well, sorry, Richie, I asked you this question your first semester also. Um, you've got two majors, you've got a lot of other interests, where do you see yourself after you are gone from Skidmore, you're a Skidmore alum, and you have a career path? Kelby, put you on the spot. Wow, as a sophomore, it's quite a <laughs> long ways away. Okay. Um, so, you know, I'm keeping my doors open. Um, I have a lot of different interests within, you know, my majors and my minor. And um, I think whatever I end up doing, I would like to kind of, um, once I once I graduate from Skidmore, either take time to pursue a job I find interesting or travel or something, or just kind of take like a breather in between um, kind of pursuing my professional career and, and college. Um, and, you know, that might manifest itself in a, in, a, in a bunch of different ways. And I'm being very vague because, you know, it's, it's still quite a ways away from me. And I don't know, you know, um, in, in my junior and my senior year where, where that's going to take me. But um, yeah, I, 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 um, I would like to take a little bit of time after college to pursue something I find interesting and, and then maybe uh, pursue a master's or something like that or a PhD. But uh, yeah, keeping my doors open at the moment, I guess. You're a sophomore. That's a, that's a good answer, Kelvin. <laughs> Jasmine? Yeah, kind of on a similar route. Um, I'm still a sophomore, so I, I think the biggest thing is keeping those doors open. Um, one thing I wanted to mention that also kind of connects back to an older uh, topic was uh, even though my majors are so different, I am consistently finding connections between them kind of randomly. Um, like, for example, in the dance department, there is a course called Kinsinology for Dancers. And as you can imagine, that <laughs> ties in very well with um, human physiology. And the same goes with flipped. Um, so as of right now, 
I want, I'm not quite sure, and I kind of don't want to put um, a label to it, but I, I do want to just kind of continue living my life out on Skidmore and um, opening those doors wherever I can and wherever is possible. Great. Thank you, Jasmine. Brooke? Um, so I'm still exploring and figuring out entirely what I want to do, um, but as of right now, I'm considering environmental education. Um, and possibly um, joining AmeriCorps after I graduate um, just temporarily and then kind of figuring out what to do from there. Um, but as of right now, that's kind of my plan. Great, thank you, Brooke. Katie. Yeah, so um, post-graduation plans include applying to graduate school for public health. Ironically, I wanna be an epidemiologist, but I tell everyone who I say that to that I was studying the plague before it was cool, before it happened to us really. And so um, I just wanna continue doing that. And obviously coronavirus has given us plenty of data for the future. And so um, I think it's gonna be a good choice and hopefully it'll work out. Thanks, Katie. Tony? Michael, what a scary question as a, as a second semester senior. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going into the real world after this and I'm, I have no idea what the job market looks like because of, uh, the pandemic and everything. But, uh, so sort of my current plan is I'm thinking of either moving to New York, Philadelphia, or Chicago, that where I move exactly is going to depend on, uh, depend on like where some of my friends are also moving because I'm probably going to be living with roommates and things. Um, I think there's, there's one story that I think really has forever changed my life on like what I want to do with my life. And that was, I went to an urgent care one time and I was talking to the doctor and the doctor asked me like, oh, what are you studying? And I said, I'm studying geosciences and theater. And he said, hmm, theater, I own a theater company. I'm like, oh, that's great. Um, and then he was like, yeah, if I could be doing theater instead of medicine, I'd be doing it any day. And like from that point on, I was like, I am not going to end up in a position where I have any regrets over whether or not I tried something. So while I am young and have a lot of energy, I'm going to do my best to try to pursue something in the arts, whether or not it's film, whether or not it's theater, whether, whether or not it's like streaming or something. Uh, I'm gonna be trying to do that for the next couple of years. I'll get some sort of day job. I'm hoping maybe tutoring that seems to pay well and, and yeah, have decent uh, kind of things. Um, but yeah, that's my plan. Move to a city, try to do the arts. If that doesn't work out, I'll probably end up working. So I, definitely something uh, re regarding environmental justice. When your first indie film shows at Sundance, I want an invitation. Well, I'm doing a, I'm doing a film for my theater senior project, so maybe you'll maybe I'll... <laughs> invite me, Richie. We started together. You you get the last word here, and I just have one final comment. Yeah. Oh, this question has been lurking in my head, but I've I think I've had a general um, sense of where I'm going. So I wanted to take a gap year just from education and and then pursue a master's in economics because. That's sort of one thing I'm very passionate about, but I'm thinking about more going into either the Federal Reserve or doing something with a think tank because doing the senior thesis or just being on the pre seminar oh, I was doing a pre-seminar thesis just to help prepare me into going into my senior thesis next semester is, oh my God, I love researching. Like, I don't know how, I just never thought that would be in me, but I just love reading articles and all these, um, just sort of standing on, I think it was like standing on the shoulders of giants, whatever that um, cliche is. Um, essentially, that's one of the biggest things that I think I enjoy is sort of pushing the boundaries of what's possible. I like public policy. I like sort of drafting economic policies. And I think being an economics major and political science major, that ultimately combines into me pursuing something with stats and something with politics. So I think the Federal Reserve is where I'm hoping to be an economist at. So that's like, I can probably give the most direct goal is I want to be an economist for the Federal Reserve. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, Richie. You know, the six of you are just stunning. I want to thank all, all six of you, Katie, Richie, Brooke, Jasmine, Tony, and Kelby for taking the time, for sharing with all of us your experiences at, at Skidmore, um, how you've balanced two very different majors, how you've managed to make it work, the, the connections that you found between the majors, um, how you have a life outside of academics as well as inside the classroom and in the laboratory and in the studio. Uh, I'd like to say to everybody who's participated first, thank you for joining us. Uh, you've asked lots of questions. We could not get to all of them. Uh, the admission staff will respond to all of your questions. So do not fear, you will hear back from folks. Um, I wanna wish everybody a great evening. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll all get through this together. And there's an inauguration next Wednesday at noon.
pay attention. Uh, you all be well, take care, and thank you for joining Skidmore College. Good night, everybody. <laughs>